So let's get started. We're going to go zero to mean in 30 minutes. Another thing that I like to do is I like to um, offer all of the materials uh, for you guys to follow along. So this presentation is available on the web. You can go to travistidwell.com presentation zero to mean. I've also uh, published the, the app that we're going to be building today um, at the location travistidwell.com zero to mean spelled out. This is the app that we're going to be building. And this is how you can follow along. So we are going to, in about 30 minutes time, we are going to build a complete event registration system. This includes user logins, user registrations, all of the CRUD capabilities of creating events, editing events, deleting events, and an index of events. And yes, we're going to do that in 30 minutes. There are a few prerequisites that you need to get, that you need to have installed on your machine in order to get started. The first one is obviously Node.js. You're going to need to install that on your server. And the next thing, just to kind of follow, help follow along, I do have some git commands in this uh, presentation. So you'll need to install git just so that you can follow along with this presentation. And then MongoDB has this community edition that allows you to install MongoDB on your local machine. So to get started, once you install MongoDB on your server, I know this sounds obvious, but you need to start the server. It doesn't do this for you automatically. If you don't do this, you're going to be stuck from the very beginning and you're going to have a very bad day. So make sure you run MongoD at the very beginning and make sure that your database is up and running uh, before you actually uh, follow along. Another thing that I'm going to talk about is an API first type of methodology. What this means is you take care of your API platform first. I didn't say you have to build the API platform. You just need to make sure that you take care of it. And what we are going to be using is a great open source 4MIO API platform. This is going to allow us to build our registration system. It's going to allow us to do user logins, user registrations, and we're going to have a very easy drag and drop form builder interface to do it. It is also open source. What that means is you can install and run this on your local machine it's very liberally licensed so that you guys can extend it. You can put it into your own servers and just have fun with it. I will also mention, even though we're not going to be doing this in this presentation, you don't have to run Form.io on your local machine. You can also get a free account at Form.io, set up a project, and that becomes your API for what we're about to go through today. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the API platform, which is Form.io. We're going to clone the GitHub repo. We're going to change the directory into the Form.io directory. We're going to type npm install, and then we're going to type node main. And I'm going to actually do this just so that we can see how this works. So right now, I'm actually inside of that directory. I just downloaded the server, and I'm going to type node main. What this is going to do is this is going to ask me a couple of questions to get the API platform installed. I just need to answer yes to the first one. The next one asked me what ap application would we like to get started with. We're, we're going to build our own application, so for this I'm just going to select one. And then I just need to input my root account that's going to be used to log into the system. I'm just going to put just my email and just a dummy password. Once we do that, the API platform is just installed within my local Mongo database, and the API platform is essentially running at this uh, address. So I can go over to my browser, I'm going to pro provide the credentials I provided whenever I installed it. And here we are. We have resources and we have forms. So within Form.io, you have the ability to build these database objects, but you do so in, with, by using these forms. So we're going to build an event registration system. Before I do that, though, before I actually build a resource, let's get a little bit familiar with this. Obviously, you want users to create accounts, so that's where the user resource is. I can input, I can create new users by just inputting data here, but I can also edit this form to extend the model. So let's say I want my users to have first name and last name. This is a form builder, so I can drag on a text field, type first name, drag on another field called last name, come down here and I press save. So not only to have I edited the form, but I've also 
edited the API behind this thing. This is entirely API driven. So by just changing and mod uh, modifying the form, I've modified the API behind this. To show you what the API looks like, if I this is at localhost 3001, if I just go to localhost 3001 and go to my user form, which is what, what I just edited, you'll see that that pulls up this JSON schema. This is how the forms are represented in Form.io. So all of this work has been done for you through a very simple interface. And as you can see, there's my first name field that we added. This also creates the API needed for all of the submissions, create, read, update, delete, index, as well as searching capabilities and all the like. You can tell it what to do when you submit. So like, let's say, for example, I want my application to send an email when a new user is created. I've got a number of different actions to pick from. I can shoot, shoot off an email and it says, hey, this new user was created and the platform will just do it. I can also decide who has access to do what. So I can lock down my APIs to have these permissions that wrap around them so I can ensure that people can only do certain things within the, within the API platform. Because this is an event registration system, we need to, build a, we need to create an event resource. So I'm going to go to new resource, I'm going to type event, I'm going to give it a title, I'm going to give it a description which is a text area, and I'm also going to give it a start and end date, but let me just play around with some of these layout components, I can actually split it up into columns as you can see right there, and then I can drag a date time inside one of those columns. So I'm going to give this to fix this the start date. And I'm going to drag another date time component right over here and make this the end, the end date. If you can build a form, you can build an API. By hitting create, I not only built the form that I'm going to use in my application, but I also automatically generated the REST API that we need for our system. So as far as the API is concerned, guess what? We're done. We've just created all the APIs necessary to build our application. We are now going to shift our focus over to the application where we're going to build the event registration system that sits on top of this. As I mentioned before, we're going to be doing this in Angular 2. Angular 2 is an amazing new framework. So you're going to be learning a lot about Angular 2 in this presentation. The best way in my mind, in my opinion, to get started is to leverage an amazing generator called FountainJS. You'll be very surprised how fast we can get going with the FountainJS generator. So the way this works is you actually have to install it. You have to type npm install yo and then generator fountain web app. You're going to make a directory, mean app, and then you're going to change directory into that, and then you're going to type yo fountain web app. What you're going to see is something that looks like this. I know it's kind of hard to see from where you are. But basically what this does is it walks you through a number of questions asking you how do you want to structure your application. You can create an application in React.js this way. The first one says which framework would you like to use. I said Angular 2. It tells you which type of module management do you want to use. These days I like to use Webpack with NPM. That's an option. It also says which JS preprocessor do you want to use. Because we're in Angular 2 I, put, I picked TypeScript. You can pick SAS for your CSS preprocessor. I just hit enter on the continuous integration. And then it says, do you want a sample app? I said yes. And then, of course, I want to use the core Angular router. You hit enter. This thing churns through a number of installations. And at the very end, it spits out a working web app that we can get started on. That web app looks something like this. And I'm just going to run, I'm going to type npm run serve just so that we can see what it looks like. So I'm going to go over to my app. I'm right now at the point where we just installed it. Fresh installation. And I'm going to type npm run serve. So right here we have localhost 3000. That's where it's actually serving. So if I go back over to my browser, I'm now going to go to there. And here we are. We have a web application that's just been started, we're ready, to, we're ready to rock and roll, start building this web app. So now that we have our application running, the next thing we need to do is install some modules. 
You can install the very first one that we're going to install is NG2 Formio. That's the Formio integration module. It also provides the renderings of the forms. We're also going to use Bootstrap. So you're going to install Bootstrap SAS. Bootswatch will allow us to change the theme so we can go to Bootswatch and pick whatever theme we want. Lodash is a like a utility Swiss Army knife type of uh, library. We're also going to be using some file loaders. Webpack has this thing called loaders. Whenever it's actually building your application, anytime it runs into a URL, it passes that through what's called a loader. And these basically tell Webpack how to build it. We need to tell our Webpack that A, we're using Bootstrap, so Bootstrap needs fonts. That's what we have right here. So this is going to tell Webpack that we're going, to, we're going to load some fonts. Anytime it runs into a font file, it needs to go out and load it. And then we also need this load children loader. We're going to be using this because we're going to be, we're going to be leveraging a thing called lazy loading within Angular 2. So all we do is we go inside of our config file under the Webpack config, Webpack disk config, and then we start adding, the, adding these. So I'm just going to copy this just so that I can be quick about it. I'm going to go into my configuration. Here's the first one, Webpack config. You'll see there's the first one. I just need to add that. The disk config, I just need to add that. And test config, I need to add that. I now need to add a new loader. This is for the fonts. So now that we did that, let's actually set up Bootstrap. So Bootstrap, there's a file that's already been provided for us called app index SCSS, which is SAS. I'm just going to copy this, and then I'm going to explain what it is after I copy it. We're going to go over here. We are going to select all, delete, and we're going to do paste. It's much cleaner. So what this is doing is this is actually, first of all, it's telling Bootstrap where the font, uh, icon font path is, which is inside of the node module. We're also going to be using Bootswatch. Bootswatch allows us to change the theme. You'll see here in a minute. Uh, it, it's Bootstrap, but it doesn't look like Bootstrap. It's, this will actually you look like Foundation, uh, which is a, another CSS framework. And then we're going to actually load the core Bootstrap file, and then we're going to apply the Bootswatch on top of that, which is really going to provide us that custom theme. And then after that, we provide our own styles. But typically, Bootstrap has you covered. So that the only styles you really need to apply are very minimal styles. After that, we want to change the nav bar. Uh, I don't know if you remember with that, the app had this default navigation bar. We, wanted that, we want to convert that into a Bootstrap nav bar. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go over to my ID. I'm going to click on app. I'm going to open up the header. This is what was provided for us by Yeoman. I'm going to select all delete and I'm going to do a paste. Now there's a gotcha with my presentation utility. It drives me crazy. And I didn't do this. The presentation library did that. This is actually supposed to be camel cased. It ends up lower casing everything that I put inside my code. I don't know why it does it, but it does. So one major gotcha is you have to turn this back into a non lowercase like that. Otherwise it's going to spit out errors and you're not going to know why. Very obscure errors that throw at you. So now that we've done that, we're going to actually change the main content. There's a couple of things that the Yeoman generator does that I'm a little bit, I think it's fairly opinionated. Of course I'm opinionated as well, but um, I needed to be able to leverage the main content and add a router outlet to it. That allows us to load content into a section of my app. They didn't set it up that way, so we're going to change a couple of things to make it so that that works. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this main content. We're going to go over to main.html, and I'm going to replace this right here with that. This router outlet is a special tag within Angular 2 that tells, tells it where to put the content for any of the routes. So if, when you load a route, you only have to provide the template that goes inside of there. And when it loads that module, it takes that template and it stuffs it. it actually, it replaces router outlet with the contents of your module. We'll explain a little bit of that once we get into it. We'll, we'll be going talking about components and all of that. So we're also going to add a home page. Okay? We want a thing that says, Welcome to the Event Manager. This is going to be just a very simple template that we're going to create within our application. I'm going to copy this. 
go back here, I'm going to create a home.html. And I'm just going to provide the template for this one little page. And of course, this could be this could add all, all, all kinds of content that you want to add. In Angular 2, there's this thing called a component. And a component allows you, it works a lot like a directive did in Angular 1, where you define your class that includes your template and allows you to attach a controller to it. So I'm going to say home.ts. So once we do that, once we add a home page, the next thing we need to do is we need to change the route structure a little bit so that it supports this nested routing that I, that I changed in my main file. To do that, I'm going to change inside of source index, we're going to actually load up the, the core module, which is router app instead of router root. These are actually components in Angular 2. So this is actually saying, okay, I want to use my fountain app component versus fountain root, and I'll, I'll explain why I, ha why I made that move. I'm actually getting rid of root. It was superfluous. We can actually achieve a much cleaner routing interface by just getting rid of it. Inside of my index, I'm going to import the home component, which we just created. So there I'm importing the home component. I also need to declare it. And I need to change in the bootstrap which module it starts off with. By, de uh, by default, it was starting with root component. We're going to get rid of root component. In fact, I can even delete it from this declarations here. I'm just doing this for cleanup. And here in a minute, you'll see how you just don't even need it. The next thing I need to do is check, uh, look at this routes file. The routes file tells the application whenever I navigate to a certain path, load a certain component and have that inside that router outlet that I showed you guys previously. So inside of routes.ts, right here I'm going to import the home component and I'm going to change it so that the component that it loads at this route is the home component. What that means is I can start doing some cleanup. I can delete this. I can delete root component because we don't need it anymore. I can delete this up here. So now our routes file is just the routes and you'll see here in a minute we're going to add some more routes so that it'll load some more modules. So let's actually just Stop this and reload it and see what we're what what it looks like now. So, so there we go. Right. So now if I hit re enter, this is basically now the app. It's very simple. There's a little nav bar at the top. There's a home button, and there's our screen that says "Welcome to the Event Manager." We're going to add a, a login up here that's going to allow people to log in. That's what we're going to do next. So with every application that I build, I like to create essentially a configuration file that's going to be used to house all of the configurations for my application. We can do this by creating a config.ts file, which is similar to JS, but it's for TypeScript. And we're going to copy the contents here. So I'm going to go over here, create a new file, config.ts. So what's going on here? All I'm doing is I'm defining some variables. I'm importing some interfaces from the Formio modules. Now what I'm doing is I'm defining some constants. That's what this export const is. And this is a TypeScript thing where I'm saying it belong it is that type which is actually an interface. This tells this interface tells me it tells the application that I must declare an app URL and I must declare an API URL otherwise it'll give me an error. And here what I'm doing is I'm pointing to the API that we just spun up. So this is the Formio API and that's my application. And then I just tell it for the auth configuration I say I'm going to use the user login form and user register form. These are the form paths that we created inside of Formio so I can actually show you where those exist.
So if I go back to Form.io and I look at my user login and user register forms over here, if I click on those and I click on Edit Form, you will see that these have a path, User Login, and the register has User Register. If you wanted to mount a different form, you can do that by just changing the path. Or you can have more than one form, or more than, and it's just, it's just as easy as changing the path, and that's where those registrations come into play. So once I do that, I need to essentially pro, uh, provide what is called the auth service. So inside of index.ts, I'm going to copy this, these co this lines right here, go back to my index, and I'm now bringing in the Formio auth service and the Formio auth config. I'm also bringing in the configuration that I just created. This is that variable that we just created, which is basically the auth configuration for my application. The next thing is a little bit confusing. In fact, when you're, we're just getting familiar with Angular 2, this part is a little bit strange, and I'm going to try to do the best I can to explain what's going on here. I am adding what's called a provider. So the core modules of, of Angular 2 or the core form IO modules of Angular 2 have this thing called an authentication service that is essentially a class that contains all the business logic for my authentication. What I'm doing here though is I'm saying that my app is going to provide the value of the authentication service. Whenever you say provide you are basically saying I'm the one who is declaring this object and because I'm declaring it the value of that object is propagated to all modules that I load inside the, uh, inside the application. So here I'm actually going to create an instance of the Formio auth service class and I'm going to provide it the value that I defined inside my configuration. So this creates the authentication service, it, it injects through dependency injection the configuration value for my auth config creates that object and now that is going to be provided to every single module that I load which we're going to do here in a minute. The next thing we need to do is create an actual module which will house all of the authentication for my application. I'm going to do this by creating what's called an auth. I'm basically a module, auth.module. And I'm going to copy and paste this code. To explain a little bit about what this is doing, all this is doing is this is me declaring my authentication and then I'm registering the routes that the core module provides. So the core module will provide user register, user login, so that whenever I navigate to those routes within my application, something happens. I can pass in a configuration here to kind of override some behaviors, but we'll do that here in a minute whenever we do um, the event system. And then at this point, I'm going to declare at the path auth in my routes, I'm going to load that module. So I'm going to go to my routes file. This is where we're going to do some lazy loading. What this is doing is this is when this basically says when I navigate to the path auth in my application, I am going to load this auth module, which we just created, and I'm going to instantiate the auth module class. You'll also see all of this craziness on the left-hand side. That's only because I'm using Webpack. If you're not using Webpack, you will not include what I just highlighted. We also need to change the navigation bar so that we have our login links up at the top of the navigation. This can be done pretty easily. I'm just going to copy this code here. I'm going to go to the header that we just created. And I'm going to add this right here. And keep in mind, it lowercased everything. So I need to change that to a capital L, that to a capital A, it lowercase the ng if. If you don't do this, it will crash and you won't know why. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I include the auth service in the header. The reason is is because you'll notice inside of the template of the header, I'm referring to this auth object. The only way that this module, this template, has access to that variable 
is if I inject it into the component. So the component for the header is right here. I just need to inject the auth service. Keep in mind the auth service was created by the index. This is where it's providing the value and it's providing the value for everything underneath it. Now when I need to say when I log in I want to redirect the user to the home page. So I'm going to do that inside of the main component because the main component is kind of like the wrapper around everything. I'm going to include my router and auth service and inside of a constructor This gives you full control over how this thing navigates as they're doing certain things within authentication. And after we've done that, let me restart my app. So now if I hit refresh, you'll see I've got my, my login register screen up here. If I click on this, I go to a page which loads the forms that I just created. This is dynamically loading those forms from my FormIO system and I can even register. I'm gonna register a new account. So I'm gonna say, and when I hit submit, that actually created a registration, logged me in, authenticated me, and it navigated me back to the homepage. I can see this account. If I go back to Form.io and look at users and look at view data, you'll see that I just created this account right here. So we did create the event within FormIO. We now just need to bring that into the application. You do this by creating a module. So we're gonna create this event module. And inside the event module, we're just gonna copy and paste this code. And I'm gonna explain what this code is as I do it. So I'm bringing in all of my imports, but one thing that I am doing is I'm registering the resource routes. What this does is this provides all of my CRUD based routes. Create, read, update, delete, index. I can view a file, I can, I can do all of that. And then at that point, I'm going to provide the Formula Resource Service and tell it which form it should link up to. So I just created an event form. And here I am, I'm providing this to the service saying, Here's your value. You should, you should link yourself to the event form within Form.io. And that does it. The next thing I need to do is I need to mount the resource to the routes. I'm going to do that in my route system. And now once I refresh my browser, I will be able to navigate to all of the event routes. I'll be able to go to event. Let me just show you. Here's all the things that I'm going to have inside of my application by just doing that. I just created a, a module, I mounted it, and now if, let me just log in as, the, as an administrator, admin account. Now you, you know, I don't have a link, but I can go to event. And you'll see I can create a new event, and that's loading the form that I built inside of Form.io. Okay, so I can say new event, Give it a start date. All of this is provided by Form.io. So I go even like these widgets and everything and I hit submit. I've got edit capabilities so I can edit the event, I can delete it, I can even do the index again. So with just a few lines of code I've created an entire CRUD based um, system within my event system. We're almost done. Now that we've done that we just need to override. So now, now a very common request is if you actually look at this and I go click on this, the view is actually a filled out form but disabled. Most people who develop applications want to have a custom view of what they want the event page to look like. So what we've done is we provided a very easy way for you to override the templates for view, edit, delete, all of, the view, all of these are, are easily editable. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to import this Formio resource view component from Formio directive. So I'm going to go back to my, where is this? This is the event module. And inside here, I just need to come over here and I need to import the view module, view component. And then I'm going to extend it. I'm going to use ES6 classes to extend the view component to provide my own stuff. 
And you're going to do that by using extends. I need to make sure I bring in component from Angular 2. So here's basically all I'm doing is I'm saying I'm going to extend the, the view component, but I'm going to provide my own template. Now you might even want to inject your own business logic. You can, in these classes, create your own methods, create your own business rules for the view page. I'm going to create a new event HTML document. Oh, I also need to import I, I do need to declare the event view component. It's one thing that I'm missing. So down here, I need to create a declarations and declare it. That's That allows Angular 2 to know that we have a new class that's available. And then the next thing I'm going to do is create an uh, event.html and I'm going to build this custom view. This could be whatever template you want it to be, but I'm just going to have the header up there at the top. I'm going to put the description in, the, in a page element, and then I'm going to have the start and end date. You could have like a calendar if you wanted. And then I'm going to add an, a link to the header just to kind of finish it off. Fix my lower cases here, make sure you do that, otherwise it won't work. And then at that point I can come back to my application, refresh the page. So now I've got this link up here at the top called events, I can click on that. That takes me to my events. I can click on this view. Oh, I know what I missed here. I created the class, but I didn't register it. So if I go back to my event module, now that I've created the class, I need to make sure that in the Formio resource routes, I tell it, hey, for the view, use that component instead. And then whenever I do that, once it refreshes, I now have that template that I'm extending the, the core component. So I've essentially, at this point, have an entire working event management system. I've got logins, I've got register, And I've got the ability to create events, edit events, delete events. So we have a complete event management system at that point, which we just demonstrated. The next thing that you'll probably want to do is launch the app. You can easily do that as well by using this facility called npm run build. What that does is it compiles a distributable application inside the disk folder. So if I go over here and I try npm run build, what that's doing is it's kind of getting everything, it's cleaning it, it's building it, it's creating a Webpack distribution, and it's done. So let's just take a look at what that did. So if I look at my directory here, you'll see that there's this dist folder. This dist folder is what that actually did. So if I go inside and look at what, what's in here, but it basically creates a package that I can then deploy to a website. And that's what I want to talk about next. which is you can then push this to a thing called GitHub Pages, which will host your application for free of charge. So you go to a GitHub account, you create a project in your GitHub account, and you push that dist folder, git push origin master gh pages, and you then have an application. I actually did this myself, so let me just show you where that is. So if you wanna see what that looks like, if you go to github.com, I'm sorry, Travis T. So the project is zero to mean. So if you click on this zero to mean project, here's the application that I, I just created. But if I switch the branch to GH pages, you'll see that this is now that dist folder that I just created. Of course, there's some more files here, but I could clean that up if I need to. But there's the index.html. And what this does is this now hosts my website for me. So if you go to travistable.com forward slash zero to mean, it's hosting the GitHub pages branch, which is what you see right here. So this is, of course, I changed the header. 
But this is the application, and this is actually running on Form.io. So this, I have a project that I created on Form.io that has all my resources, my forms, so I don't even need a local server. Um, it's communicating to the live Form.io server here. I now have an entire serverless application that's communicating to the Form.io API, and I've got an event registration system. So you can actually host serverless app free of charge github will not charge you for this um, pointed to a project that you can create on form.io free of charge we won't charge you as long as you don't cross a thousand submissions a month and you essentially have an entire hosted application for no charge so with that said that's it guys thank you so much